Hello, 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 and welcome back to Coffee at Grace. I am Dee Kendricks, your culture strategist, your grace warrior, your kiki buddy, your fresh brew topic host, and we've made it another week. Uh, and uh, I actually want to welcome my co-host, Asi Kendricks. Hey. Hey, Asi, welcome back. Hey there, how are you? I am doing just peachy. Great. You happy to be back Great. at the table? You know, I am. Well, fantastic. So, folks, we also want to welcome you to our July summer series, um, which is Love and Marriage. And if you watched last week's episode, you know that for the entire month of July, well, just about the entire month of July, we will be focused on love and marriage, which if you know, like I know, is a super duper ooper loaded topic. And we are going to try to cover what we think are some of the most critical topics within that. But what's more exciting than any of that is that Mr. Kendricks will be the co-host for all of it. Yes, yes. Absolutely. So that's pretty dope. Let's... Let's jump right in. Okay. I see we've got a big announcement. We do. Big, we do. big, big. You're going to make it, right? I am going to make it, but mm. I could use a drum roll. All right, folks. So listen, I love connecting with you all weekly. I do. It is one of my favorite things to do, like absolute favorite things. Sometimes I'm not sure if any of you actually ever watch. I mean, it does say there's views. And then there's times that I remember, you know what, freak it, for the one person who needs what I'm saying and what we're saying, right. it's critical. But it was, there's but so much information that I can, you know, cram into because of the framing of how we structure the show, the sure. timing, right, of the show. We can't be in here forever and no one wants to listen forever. <laughs> um, there's but so many topics, right, that we can talk about. And sometimes there's but so many um, I'd say even there's but so deep that we can get. So I was all the rage when I started getting some feedback okay. about people wanting more videos, more kind of just in the moment, few minutes here and there. Um, and so me and God got to talking. Okay. And at the end of the day, I'm called to inspire. Like that is what I do. Uh, yes. it, whether it's called coffee and grace, whether it's called culture strategy, whether it's called love conversation, whatever, all of it is me connecting with my calling and my need and my destiny work to inspire others to do every single thing that they're supposed to do in life. Right. That is who I am. So this is what we came up with. I probably did a preempt drum roll. I probably need the drum roll now. <laughs> so ben, there we go. I am excited to tell you that we are bringing to you the morning sip with D. The morning sip. The morning sip. It is going to be the inspirational, reflective moment that every day needs to show up as your best. It'll just be a few moments um, for me to share what's on my mind with you, some things for you to think about as you go through the day. It's going to be at the top of every day. So we're going to ask that you still bring your cup that you meet us, but this time that you also bring your heart, your intention, and your mind. And that my goal is to inspire anything in you that needs to show up for the best of you in any room, at any table, in every day. And I'm excited that we're launching on Monday, Monday, July 5th. So most of you will be off, hangover, or not. We'll still be doing this. And so typically between 7.30 and 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And that's all I'll share for now. But we're pretty excited about that. Again, the morning sip. You can catch us on Twitter or Instagram at Coffee and Grace. That's where we'll be um, pretty much uh, posting and sharing and having those moments. Um, and that's it for now. I'm super duper excited. This is really a branch out relationship and it's really in response to what you all are asking for and need. And I get to see you every day, Monday through Thursday anyway. Why? Because Fridays are for the coffee table. <laughs> right. So we're used to having the last sip, which is, you know, the sip that really con keeps us connected until we meet again. Now every morning we'll have the morning sip which will connect us and connect you to everything you need to connect to. So that's that. There you go. I'm Congratulations. excited. Thank you. I'm pretty 
pretty super excited. Ben, are you excited? I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Ben is going to be on there for sure. All right. So next up, we've got some literally hot off the press. This wasn't even scheduled. Right. right. Like hot off the press brew. So wait. Well, yeah, here we are. Fresh brew. Fresh brew. Here is what's brewing right now. Bill Cosby is released from jail, y'all. Right. Like, well, at least I think he is. They said he's getting released. But this picture, I don't know how old the picture is. Whatever. I think, he, but he's getting released. Apparently, in um, due to a Supreme Court overturn due to misconduct um, on behalf of prosecution. Um, it's very interesting. I think that it brings back a lot of betwixt feelings and right. mixed feelings right. that, you know, stayed at the center of, I'd say... Um, any culture, to be honest with you, uh, around, <sighs> if we be candid, sure. there's a large part of us that felt like he be, he received harsher treatment than his peers. Of course. Um, there's also a large portion of us that say, just because we emphatically believe that doesn't mean that we also think that where the smoke was, there wasn't fire. Right, right. Um, and so at no point do a lot of us, I think, um, and if I insert my personal opinion, so I want to be clear, this is this part is my personal opinion. Um, in no part do I think that fair treatment equates to ignoring um, and negating the justice system. Um, but, I mean, I don't think any of us expected it. What, what do you, what say you? The uh, my heart goes out for a few different players, for Bill Cosby, um, for the accusers who uh, yeah. we uh, believe that they respectfully uh, testified in a um, a difficult way yeah. um, at a difficult time, um, and to the community at large who um, I hope that this doesn't uh, prevent or provide any sort of apprehension from future accusers right. um, to uh, be comfortable coming forth and knowing mm. that um, justice would be served um, and, and, and to offer that uh, to them as still an option that they will always have the right to speak up um, and to um, um, uh, share what's happened and face the difficulty of going through the experience of a trial um, and what that endures. Um, but to know that the justice system um, will continue to need to be adjusted, um, if you will. Um, you know, I think it's interesting because in, in moments like these, or should I say leading up to these, there's such a hot white fire um, around, and by white I mean the hottest temperatures of fire, the brighter the fire, uh, professionals say the hotter. There's such a hot white fire around when this trial was taking place around whether he was innocent or not. Right. And no one thinks about the consequences uh, that sometimes the consequences of the lack of equality in a process can do more damage than to the person that you're hoping receives mm. justice. And so we don't know. The story is still unfolding. And so we don't have a ton of detail. Uh, but we do know that the Supreme Court overturned due to prosecution misconduct. So something about how the prosecution handled matters. Um, there's, there's a few trace lines around the fact that there was a previous deal made for a case earlier on, like in 2005, that really shouldn't have put him in a position to be tried for this one. That's a whole nother story, right, okay? Right. A whole nother story. Because number one, so are, were we retrying him for the same people? And how come we never heard about those? Right. How it, come, right? You it has all, the same name. Same, right? And so it's like, are you, are you kidding me? But I think the biggest lesson here as this unfolds is, did we, um, is the price for inequality in his case 
victims feeling like justice hasn't been served? And will the ripple effect and implications be, to your point, that now other victims won't want to come forward? Um, I don't want to go down the road too long. I've got my own personal opinions and whether um, I think this story is true. I have my own former story about meeting Mr. Bill Cosby um, <laughs> that I will not share. But what I will share um, is that due to that story, due to me showing up at that meet and greet with him with the bright, bushy, rooted, aged eyes that I had right. um, and leaving feeling like, did that just happen? Um I understand where some victims may be coming. Now, trust and know for all of those who will text me and call me after this being like, did Bill Cosby slip you? No, no one slipped any. We didn't even share a drink. But we shared enough space and enough energy and enough interaction for me when accusers came forward, even in my moment of he's not being treated the same as a Harvey Weinstein and some other peers that are representing the majority even in that moment, I said, but I tell you what, I don't think they're all lying. Now, did I think some of them are lying? I ain't going to tell you no lie. Some of the stories didn't add up. But that's, but the, someone said to me today, the truth doesn't have an expiration date. Right. Neither does the energy that transpired when whatever took place took place with whomever, whenever um, they felt violated. And I can say violated because he was still tried and found guilty. And this overturn was due to misconduct not expunged from a to a place of innocence. So anyway, that is what's brewing. That's, That's crazy, deep. ain't That's it? Deep. I think it's, what is he, almost three years Yeah. Um, since the verdict was and he's been in, in jail. Um, Living a hard life. Yeah. Y'all seen some of them pictures from Bill Cosby in jail? At 83, 84. I almost felt sorry for him. Uh, it's a blessing that he's still here Listen. to walk out. Okay. Now that's some grit. <laughs> <laughs> Say what we want, but Bill Cosby survived three years of prison. Right. Okay. I mean, as a celebrity, and, and you could tell by the way he was looking, he wasn't getting special treatment, at mm. least not like significantly. Okay, whatever. So anyway, we move on. Right. So... Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Love and marriage. Today is episode number nine, and today's topic is hashtag self-love. Yes. Hashtag self-love. I should say, though, that in honor of kicking off the Love and Marriage series, I wore the dress that you proposed to me in. Ah, I saw that yes. as we were now driving this down. Yeah. This doesn't mean that by, like, ep the last episode I'm going to come in in my wedding gown. Hey. But but uh, I should have put on the short <laughs> set that I had on with. <laughs> right. That part. One day we'll play some of the footage from the proposal. There's a lot of footage out there. Yeah. But a lot's changed since then. Right. Um, I have hair on my sides. You know, my hair was shaved then. I may I can't tell if I've lost or gained weight. The last month, uh, it's a toss. Uh, COVID produced this mm. roller coaster. It's a toss up. But Self-love. Some folks uh, may be like wondering, like, why would we start a series around love and marriage and uh, for, you know, all intents and purposes, relationships with talking about self-love, like the mm -hmm. individual. And it may seem, um, you know, kind of like a separate that, that they're, but I don't think that they're mutually exclusive. In fact, it was important. Number one, it was important as a first topic to me because for two reasons. One, because I also wanted to stress the fact that this series, Love and Marriage, ha is, is not based in solely for people who are married, engaged, or even coupled up in any fashion. So I wanted everyone to find themselves in this information. Secondly, I also wanted to stress the fact that any successful relationship, marriage, or ability to love starts with being able, it, be, it, it, it starts and ends with self-love. Right, right. And, and that is a something that we don't really innately master 
Um, in fact, a lot of us don't because I think it's easier to love people and things than it is to truly love ourselves. But the problem is you can only love people and things to the capacity by which one loves themselves. Agreed. And it, at the end of the day, it starts with uh, love starts at a friendship level and friendships mm. involve love. Yes. And in order to uh, or are congruent to each other, in order to really love your mate or friend um, to start, you have to love yourself. Why do we first think like why do we think that it's easier to love others and have affection for others? before we can deeply love ourselves. And maybe I should, some might say, well, Dee, what are you referring to as self-love? So for the sake of this conversation so that there's context, um, A, there's a ton of definitions. So we, the people at Coffee and Grace, determined this definition that self-love is the um, deep, intense aff affection, appreciation, and um, unconditional love for oneself. And that includes who you are at your value base, who you are at your essence, the things that you're born as that you can't change like race, because some people struggle with their race, <clears throat> Candace Owens. And, um, and, and, you know, really struggle with how the, uh, the natural DNA that they have. And so they may not look like society tells us we need to look. They may struggle with what hair texture they have. They may struggle with the fact that they have an affinity for things that they have an affinity for. Um, and can you look yourself in the mirror every day, both inside and out, and say, I have a deep fondness and affection and love for this person. I, I define that as self-love. Like, what do you define as self-love before we go back to the question of why do we struggle? Why is it easier for me to love you than it is for me to love me? You know, so a uh, couple questions there. And I'll start with um, when I was reading somewhere where uh, men and you could say women as well, that it in order to love or... Um, it starts with um, they have to know that they're worthy um, and deserving. Mm. So when you look at uh, worthy and deserving, I think it dates back to uh, upbringing. And was there um, an overflow of love, um, nurturing, caring um, in, the, in the home? Was that a conversation? I know that um, when I was young and I had a, a mother that I loved. Yeah. Um, but we didn't have a, we weren't very loving to each other. Like, so what do you mean when you say that, though? Like, I think the, you can hear sometimes parents telling their kids that they love them. Yes. Um, uh, the kids saying that they love them back or you, the, um, that didn't happen in my household until I was an adult. Interesting. Um, I remember uh, some at one, some points my mom would drop me off at school, and the um, uh, it was always I always said um, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. um, uh, reluctantly, do I say bye? Um, but the um, that was the extent. Okay. And the I remember sometimes I would I always have this issue of ending a phone call, and I never say bye. I'll say, see you later, and I'm hanging up the phone. I and, say bye when I'm mad at you. You know, and my mother calling me back and saying, why don't you, why didn't you say bye? I said, I don't. Um, <laughs> but So I say, see you later. Uh, so the, um, just the, the, not to say that it wasn't a lot of love. It was just a different way of expressing it. And so I grew up that way of um, kind of hiding or harboring or not knowing how to show um, love. So what I hear you saying is like, cause that's a lot is sometimes our ability to have affection for ourselves is very guided on the examples that we have of how affection was shown to us. Right. So it's easier to practice on other people, um, to figure out how you get it right. And without, uh, no one thinks to practice on themselves innately, right? Unless you're taught that behavior. 
because I I grew up in. So what's interesting is I grew up in a house. Did I grow up in a house that was very affectionate? My grandmother was super affectionate. Like, um, for those who know her, know like she is the hug machine and. We weren't allowed to leave the house every day without hugging her. Um, my mom, the my mom is way more affectionate today than she was growing up. Not that she was like mm-hmm. get out of here, squirt, <laughs> but <laughs> but but she, you know, there was the hug. She it just wasn't as much. And my grandfather, I don't know that I gave him a choice. Like, I think I just consumed, like, I was on his every whim, like, hanging off of him, right? And I think that's just kind of the case with daddies and girls. Um, And so I grew up with very, in my opinion, strong views of affection. Um, But I didn't really grow up understanding what self-love looked like. I think the best advice or best class that I got about self-love growing up was carrying yourself with a sense of pride. Sure. So appearance and, you know, but I was taught a lot more about how to treat people than I was myself. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And I think men grow up uh, being discouraged from showing affection. Yeah. Um, and so the uh, by the time we become teenagers and adults and get into these relationships, it's a learning um, to learn how to show affection. Um, but I don't believe that that's something that that's just innately um, natural for men. Well, I don't think uh, – I think uh, feeling emotion – is natural. I happen to think that yeah, men yeah. are more emotional than women because I think you feel deep because you've got deep roots within the earth. I don't think that you are as um, that you show it the same ways we do. Partly because of society, partly because you're just not wired that way. The same way, you know, I think men aren't as affectionate because they don't feel the same. Like, I think that you all, you know, a lot of times I think the toe tag of being emotionless is put on men. And I find that I disagree heartily. I do think that you're not as sensitive to the um, intricates of just general feelings that come with affection, which actually go into the point about how important or or disimportant or unimportant um, affection is mm. in relationship. But interestingly enough, we've literally talked about this for 10 to 15 minutes and it's still talking about loving other people, right? And how easy that is. But what's funny is for self-love, um, number one, I don't remember it being a real topic even in culture and society until maybe the early 2000s, right? In the age of Oprah, Um, and self-help when self-help started coming out terms of self-love started Mm -hmm. coming out but by the time it reached cultures that I exist within um, you know there were I was decades behind the lesson but the challenge is when we think about divorce rates when we think about domestic violence taking out of it you know any proclivities around Um, you know, mental illness and intent to do harm, take that aside for a minute. We think about all these things, um, you know, the absence of knowing how to have a relationship with oneself plays such a pivotal role. And I can speak for myself in saying, you know, when I think about, you know, believe it or not, I dated people before you. Really? I, I know, I know, I know. I didn't know that was the case. I mean, I, they exist. I mean, they were all starters. <laughs> don't don't worry. They were all practice. Hey, well, that's right, good. right. That's they good. weren't attached to my destiny or anything. <laughs> um, but when I think about how I showed up in those relationships um, and even in friendships, there's a ton of reflection around my inability to love myself. And I won't even say inability, but I'd say the lack of self-love because I think it also starts with the lack of relationship. I think if it's hard to love anything you don't have relationship with, and that includes ourselves. Agreed. Agreed. And I think that at the core, that's where it starts. Um, 
establishing a relationship with yourself um, and to make sure that you know that you are loved. Um, so some things, you know, recently, at least, I've always struggled with self-doubt, if you will. Yep. Um, and recently, I started just in the morning when I have to be in the bathroom looking in the mirror, I just look at myself and really look at myself. Yes. Um, and I think that's a, a good way to um, encourage yourself to look beyond um, what you see on the exterior um, and really get into the interior and understanding that you are amazing. You yes. are getting things done, and you are holding yourself accountable, too. Just like we surround ourselves with our friends who um, uh, keep us in check, um, who will uh, call us out, um, but who also love on us yes. uh, when we need that. That flows into relationships as well. So I'm going to pause there for a second because I think what you just explained is some really good examples of what self-love looks like. Sure. Sure. Right. And yeah. what deepens self-love. Um, but we both agree it starts with the relationship within. Right. And I think people tend to think sometimes that affirmations and declarations tend to be whimsical and hokey pokey, especially. Listen, I'm, I grew up in the church um, and uh, there are a number of my friends who are still very deep in the church. You've heard me say on this show over and over again, I'm still very much a believer. Um, <laughs> I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. Yes. But at the same time, I've expanded my awareness sure. to be very keenly aware of all of the tools and resources that don't just exist within man-made doctrine um, that really connect me closer to my source, right? That mm. is God. And... I forgot where I was going with this, but I'll go wherever <laughs> we're I, going. We're going, we going wherever I'm going. Right. Oh, the hokey pokey. So when a lot of times people hear things about manifestation mm -hmm. and manifesting your destiny, and sometimes this, ooh, I didn't plan on going here, and some of the church folk might be mad, but this just came to me. Okay. A lot of times when we start talking about manifestation and declaring um, abundance in your life and manifesting a thing and how and, and taking charge within the universe, etc. People immediately hear what that doesn't include. And sometimes people are like, well, it can't be just that alone. You can't just think a thing or without prayer and without God. And here is the deal. Right. I believe that sometimes within culture and the problem with religion, there's a lot of problems with religion, but the problem with religion is it's so there's so much dogma about having a relationship with someone and something else other than yourself. Sure. And sure. so you are solely reliant on this being that you can't see to affirm you. And so then what happens is, we then only have the physical manifestation of that on the earth to affirm us, which tend to be preachers and ministers and evangelists and parents and things like that. So we're always yearning outside to feel something inside that's temporal until we start having the relationship with something no one told us to. And that's us. Ugh, that's huge. Right? And important. And loving me has nothing to do with how little I love Jesus right. or how much I love Jesus. Right. In fact, the deeper I dug into relationship with self and spirituality, the closer I felt like I got with God. And it is those voices in the morning, in the stillness, that talk to you and say, go talk to yourself. Because we all represent God to some extent. The Bible right. talks about how there's this part of him in us. We're all little G-O-Ds. Like, literally, that's what it says, right? And so, really, the God in you is talking to yourself. But if you believe that you consistently have to talk to somebody else besides you, when does that journey ever start? <laughs> right, right, right. And really just um, envisioning yes. what it looks like for you and your mate. Um, and once you can even envision it, um, you believe it to be true. Yes. And I believe that part of that comes in 
because the more you get to know you, mm-hmm. just like a human, you begin to love you beyond the faults and the flaws. Right. Just like a human, just kind of how I love you beyond the faults. Right. Uh. <laughs> and, and the flaws, but then <laughs> the more I love me, the more I believe I deserve and can do anything. Right. So then I'm putting that energy with whatever I'm speaking over to myself like you have. And I love that you use that example. But, you know, other examples of when self-love clearly isn't present is not only lack of relationship with self, lack of your ability to spend time by yourself. Right. Have you ever met people who always have to be around other people? You know, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's something I've struggled with. Um, maybe not to the severity that I yeah. always had to be around other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the, um, just uh, getting into a place where you can be comfortable being alone Yes. Um, and just being alone with your thoughts, alone yes. with an opportunity to figure things out um, is 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 a, a huge and it's not something that I've always I always understood that if I dove into my hobby that I was taking care of myself, uh, um, which isn't necessarily untrue. But you know, it, it's the, just not a full pick, right? It's not the full component, right? And when I looked around one day and was like, you know, I don't really have any healthy hobbies. I mean, <laughs> cigar, cigar smoking and whiskey tasting aren't the healthiest hobbies to have, <laughs> not <laughs> so, by themselves. So, I uh, so just sitting, reading, yes, um, researching something that uh, may not have anything to do with what's on your agenda for any given day, but provides you with an opportunity for, to see some different things clearer and get some clarity on things. It's awesome. I absolutely love that. And one of the things that just came to my mind is, you know, why that was the case before, because who wants to spend time with somebody they don't know? Right. Right. So when we think about self-awareness and emotional intelligence being so critical in key relationships and our professions, and we think about because I've I've spent my entire career in leadership and now I counsel leaders um, and I'm in awe sometimes of the lack of self-awareness and people can't figure out how they're missing things. And I always say it always comes back to you. Mm-hmm. How well do you know you? Because the better you know you, the more time you want to spend with you, and the more time you want to spend with you, the more you develop a relationship. And then you become concerned about others. And so I think part of the reason people struggle spending time by themselves is because they're not in relationship with themselves. Um, you know, it's also the reason that people sit at home and overeat, right? Um, and need to drink to get the day away because. They can't sit with their thoughts because they're uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable because there's this one-way subconscious conversation. And then if you're not in relationship with yourself, the voice you think that you're hearing that sounds like it's your voice is not your voice. It's every toxic energy and impression that's been put on your life. So you're going through your day about how things went wrong, and it's like you suck. You're horrible. And those are the things you need to question. Those are the things. Those are the things that you need to, I'm not good enough. I'm yes. not attractive enough. I'm not slim enough. Right. Um, those are things that I've asked myself. And then you just start to say, really? But Is why? that the case? And who's defining your attraction right now? Hello. <laughs> and society and media don't help, right? Exactly. And our access to social media doesn't help because we literally have this license to put 30 10 second commercials on for every single body. <laughs> right? And so, right, right, you know, right. the spirit and energy of comparison is a hard demon to fight mm-hmm. if you haven't mm-hmm. if you don't hashtag have self love. And I am a person who struggles with comparison not in the sense that most would say like I want to go see what they're doing. I don't ever seek it. Sure. But because I struggle with <laughs> perfectionism, which is kind of, I think, an innate disease you struggle with when you're raised as a pastor's kid. Um, It's hard for me not to come across the photo of anyone else and not say to myself, do you got to do better, right? Mm -hmm. But these days in life, it's my relationship in this, I have fallen in love with myself 
And in fact, next week we're, we're going to talk a, a bit about loss. Um, and one of the things that happens in loss in relationships and in marriage, a lot of times we talk about grief of losing a person, but sometimes it's grief of who you were and now not knowing who you are again. So even as a married woman, my journey of self-love, like I can remember back in, I don't know, 10 years ago, whatever, my friends and some family used to think I was crazy when I'd be like, oh, I'm going to be late for a movie. And they're like, who you go to movies with? Me. Like my Saturday obsession was to go spend a full day with me. Like, I want to go catch this movie. I'm going to get this glass of wine while I'm there. I'm going to probably go see two. I might eat half a pizza while I'm there. Ir irony was I was much thinner, but whatever. Um, and then I'm going to go take myself to dinner. And what would happen in those moments, I would have healthy conversation with myself. Sure. Like, oh, that was a good movie. Or, girl, you ain't do too bad. You only ate three slices of what you could have ate six. So, you know, I really, even things that you talk about, I can easily look at a person, energy aside, and see how they dress themselves, see how they carry themselves, see how they talk about other people, or for the love of God, see how much they talk about themselves. <laughs> well, they'll always be kind of those egomaniacs, if you will, where they take self-love to the extreme. Um, no such, well, I won't say no such thing. I'd say what I found is when you try to produce something that's not natural, it's right. always an inflated version of it. Of course. Right? So what we see as inflated self-love, which you're right, is ego, it's really a desperate attempt to love what they see every day with no real relationship mm -hmm. with themselves to do so. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes, so I remember uh, as a young professional uh, practicing self-love and self-care could be if I had a big meeting within that week or the next day, I would go literally and buy a new dress shirt. Yeah. Um, because me showing up with a new dress shirt, I had this uh, feeling of confidence. Yes. And preparation. Yes. Uh, that I was ready to take it on. Yes. And recently, um, a good friend of ours um, suggested that, you know, I've started to take walks. You know that. Yeah. Um, you love your walks. You know, when you take they're those walks. They're hot in Dallas, though. Right. Well, they're better. Are I, won't they? Say, I won't say hot. They're better. They're hot. Well, I bought these biking shorts to go with you, but I ain't been. I'm gonna do this AC Peloton. <laughs> you either you either have Milwaukee, Wisconsin humidity, or it's all the same to me. Warmer weather. But in with <laughs> <laughs> and I choose warmer weather or more sunshine. I should say. Right. I don't like gray skies, but anyway. More sunshine. Okay, but I died. When I take those walks to let something go. Ooh. Tell us more I was about like, that. I never thought about that. You know, you're, uh, I go out to take a walk because I'm attempting to let some calories go and <laughs> let some pounds go. Essentially. I'm all for multitasking. Um, and I, I try to jog a couple of those blocks in the, uh, in the in, with the extreme that if I jog, I'll lose some more uh, calories and yes. let some more weight go. And the um, it was brought to my attention, you know, l let something that you're thinking of go as well. I... Um, take that walk, slow or fast, and what is it when you hit the door, what is it that you want to let go? Who said that? Who do we know that that's that wise? Lori. Oh, I love it. Hey, Lori. Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori is... <laughs> Lori, that's a, we'll save Lori for another day, but let's just say Lori is our Reiki and energy friend. And, but yeah. um, no, yeah. that's fantastic. I love that. Um, you know, for me, that is self-love because even taking on the mindset that you don't have to hold everything in and you don't have to control and right. harbor everything. Right. Um, and that you are releasing something is a good sign of self-love. You know, one, as we start to wrap up, time flies, right? Mm -hmm. um, one might be watching this saying, okay, you talked about what signs of self-love look like um, or don't look like, right? Both, which 
are examples of, do you have relationship with yourself? Do you struggle spending time with yourself? Are you dis, do I see a lot of displacement of anger? Have you ever just met an angry person? <laughs> like super angry. Um, I know immediately, you know, it's hard for me. And I'd say when we, you know, hashtag four agreements, if you haven't read the four agreements, get the four agreements. Hmm. It's not a, it's not a big book, but it gives you four agreements to live life through. And somehow it really does cascade it all. But one is take nothing personal. And that is the agreement that's hardest for me uh, to take. Sure. Sure. Um, but I'm getting there where I'm aware, but disconnecting from the emotional response, right? But when I see super angry people, even racist people, right? Um, you know, I can easily say there's an issue with self relationship and self love. Another thing is sometimes we think when people are just poorly dressed, it's a self love issue. Sometimes it's when they're very well dressed. Cause when you say, I, you know, one of my acts of self-love was getting a new shirt for interviews. Prior to, in another stage in my life, I never interviewed or did a big meeting without a new suit or dress. It had nothing to do with loving me, though. It mm. had everything to do with wanting to impress mm. and not being wanted to be seen as somebody who was inferior for whatever the opportunity was, which certainly was, you know, classic textbook uh, challenge with self-love because I didn't think I deserved me at my core, authentic me, all of me couldn't, didn't think that if I showed up as me, I would be worthy, hmm. that they needed to meet some representative, right? And so, um, in some ways you were investing in yourself though still investing in my i loved i think the love piece of it was but i think it was the root right i think the love piece was that i cared about my career and my life enough to right. want to be on a path and track that even made me want to show up and impress right. i think because it's all a journey none of us are ever meant to get this right away part of the reason some of you may be even watching this is because where you're at and where you're going this is what you need to deal with now, right? Mm -hmm. This is our journey. Um, I think that the the issue with me in that journey around the area of opportunity of self-love was I thought about myself highly enough to put myself in a position for opportunity. But when it came time to stand in who I in the power of self-love to show them mm -hmm. all of the amazingness that is me, I decided somebody else was better mm. and let me get something that shows them I deserve this versus your approach right so two same action two different approaches from two different places yours it actually tapped into a self-love bone I deserve to show into this opportunity shown up right like as they say casket sharp I don't always like that phrase anymore but um, mine was, I deserve to show up and get it. So I'm going to tap into something I think they want to see. Mm. Right. Um, but some people listening to us and watching us today may say, well, how, where do I start? Right. And what happens if I don't get this right? I'll start with the latter. Cause I think that's easier. What are the implications and the consequences of, of going through life without making an earnest effort to have relationship with yourself and live in a space of hashtag self-love? That is a lonely life. Even if you got people around. Right. And it is some people's reality. It really is. I think it looks... I think it looks like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I think the complications are you will survive no relationship right. with anyone because the ceiling starts within, right? And so I can only love my husband as much as I love myself, right? right? right. I can only be as gracious to my husband as I am to myself. I can only be as gracious to my friends as I am to myself. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to explore who I am as a human being and what my values are and, you know, 
even the things I don't like. You and I both know I struggle with a mild case of body dysmorphia, right? I can lose 40 pounds and I still, in my mind, look in the mirror and see something different. Now what's changed is self-love has said, but you're still amazing. But this body has gotten you 41 years. This body wakes up every day for you and let's not take that for granted. And so I don't hate on my body, but um, I would say that, you know, the complications of not pursuing a self-love relationship and consistently working at it every day are going to show up at work. Because if I'm not curious about getting to know me and my flaws, and while they still make me a great person, just not a perfect one, then guess who else I'm not going to do that with? Anyone else. Right. If I'm not curious about me, I'm not curious about anyone else. Right. Right. And so that is that's the cost. Right. Um, you can only fake it so long, which is why people tend to be four and five marriages in and sometimes three marriages in because you can only fake loving you. But so long, sometimes it's not that they don't love the person. It's what's the capacity to love myself so that I can love them more. Um, but what are some ways that if I want to work on this us, Right. Um, whether this is some new stuff, whether you're on the other end of this and like, they just talking some real shit, right? Yeah, I think we talk about some, so, uh, positive self-talk. Yep. Um, questioning those times when, uh, you are questioning yourself. Yes. Um, and, uh, making sure that you devote some time to just look at yourself. How do you do that though? <coughs> You know, the way I do it is the, I will, while I'm brushing my teeth, I just look into my eyes um, and look into my eyes from the extent and uh, the, um, I'm not looking at my um, uh, skin or the bags that are under my eyes on any given day. I'm more so looking at um, uh, my life and kind of my actions and what I have to do on that day um, and how I'm going to show up and accomplish um, and the how I'm going to relate to the people that I have to interact with. I love that. I think some other ways in addition to that, um, especially if you're in this place where you feel like you love yourself, but you found yourself in some of the examples that we gave that show up as ways of people struggling not to. Mm -hmm. I'd say to those folks, I don't think you don't love yourself. I think that um, your life and your higher self is calling on you to deepen the relationship of loving yourself. And so if you do find yourself there, I think um, you start where you can. If looking in the mirror, having those moments are hard for you right now, then pay somebody to help you have those moments. Get a therapist. A lot of times we think therapy is really just about crisis or mental illness. Believe it or not, counselors um, are really good at just showing up and saying, I want to work on me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that looks like right now. I don't know where to start. They're paid. They go through school, most of them. <laughs> they should check the track to credentials um, to help you process that. Because sometimes you don't, if we're not taught, you really don't know how. Um, I think the other time is sometimes we just have to get in the mood and moment to be able to know how to do it. So that's where maybe you um, introduce self-care because a lot of people think self-care is self-love. And in some ways it is, they are interchangeable, but you can't sure. self-care your way into a loving relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, you can get all the spa treatments in the world. You can get the best wigs, lace fronts, weaves, press out, you name it, car, suit, and still struggle with what you see in the mirror. But but if you do it with intention of booking a spa appointment to say, I'm going to go spend just a little bit of time to get my mind in to just think about what I love about myself. And I would even say the easiest way is to become curious about yourself and maybe take a walk and ask yourself a question of, who am I right now in life? 
Start to date yourself, even if you're in relationship. And so, um, believe it or not, it's t- it, we're wrapping up. Those are good ones. The they, um, and don't forget about the um, just spend some time alone with yourself. Yeah, I mean, alone with yourself. I know that sometimes it's free. S- silence can be deafening, and everybody doesn't know how to do it. Sure. But the other piece is that I got reminded of this week by the same person. You don't have to do what society says is that version of, like, it doesn't have to be an hour to ourselves. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. And that is my problem. Like, when when I started a good journey of loving myself, it literally started with 90 minutes a day at 530 in the morning. My spouse will tell you uh, the only thing happening at 530 in the morning is me shutting his alarm off or trying to get to the restroom. Um, And so I would beat myself up that I couldn't find this time in this where I am today and as this married person. But you know what? It's where it's the best for where you are. And so if all you can find is five minutes away from everything and away from everybody to check in and say, hey, I know we haven't spoken in a while. And start asking yourself questions like like you would somebody you want to get to know because we change. And sometimes it's not that we didn't love ourselves, it's that we didn't continue to get to know ourselves through the changes, which is also how marriages fall apart because that's the same thing that happens in marriage, that as people grow and evolve, they don't become curious and get to know that person at every level. But, but we're not talking about that this week. We're talking about self. Right. So... <laughs> Don't do that. Um, That's that. Uh, We hope that this was helpful. Again, it was super important for us to start a conversation in a series about love and marriage with what is the most important factor to successful relationships in marriage, and that is self-love. Hashtag self-love. And it's also why some of y'all are trying to control these kids, vicariously living dreams through these kids, and beating these kids like y'all shouldn't be beating these kids. (laughs) Cussing these kids out. (laughs) Because you really are saying, I am mad that you, that A, I didn't do A, or that, um, you know, I couldn't, so you have to. Right. And listen, those are other implications of not having relationships with self. I mean, it really, really is. I could talk about this forever, but we can't because Ben has to go home. And Ben loves us, so he'd sit here, but yeah. It's been a good conversation. It has. It's time for last sip, but guess what? I don't have no last sip. This is the last sip I have in this cup. Um, And you know what? That's it. That's it. If you really want to know the truth, I wrote it down on my notes and I never came up with one. That's the truth. (laughs) That is the, that is me loving myself enough to be honest with you and say, there is no last sip this week. Uh, Other than subscribe. Listen, we love you. We know you love us, but also share it with a friend, share it. And don't just share it on their social media platform. Text it to them. Send them the link. Because here's the thing. I'm not just doing this for me. And I really don't care if there's thousands and millions of viewers because that's not why I got into it. But I do care that who we're supposed to reach, we are. So part of the burden of being a Coffee and Grace family member is that you have to make sure that in the spirit of grace, you are sending these shows to anyone that you think could benefit from. I don't care if it's a two-minute clip of the show. I, y'all don't have to listen to the whole show. I mean, I'd like it because we work hard on it. But so that's it. I see. Thanks. Thank you. Where thanks are we for going? Me. Are we going to eat? I'm starving. I'm so starving. We haven't eaten today. We have. I had two cheese sticks. Hashtag protein. <laughs> and you know the funny thing was that like I came into the meeting before the show and they were like, "That's your lunch," and I was like, "Here's the deal. I forgot to eat lunch before I brushed my teeth." And so I, I, I knew I had to record. Uh, cheese 
depending on its color. It was mozzarella before people started talking about me. It tends to be the same color as your tea. Well, I didn't even have coffee, so I didn't have my daily. Oh, I made coffee. That, diuretic. That, <laughs> it's on you that you didn't have coffee. I made a perfectly good French pot, ah. French press pot of coffee. And I asked you and you said, you, I said, you want me to turn the water on? Not for me. Yeah, turn the water on. You yeah, but but I made the coffee. You saw me pour that coffee. Stop it. Yeah, I was running around the house. I don't know if I saw the coffee. <sighs> well, guys, well, family, thanks for joining us. Um, and uh, we will see you, number one, Monday in the morning with yes. the first sip. Oh, and happy uh, Independence Day, for whatever that means for you. Weekend. Right. Um, Long time this time. But yeah, it'll be Sunday. Some starts Friday, right? Sunday, and have off Monday. So the kickoff starts today, right. which is fantastic. So make sure you get to happy hour. I'm hoping all of you ended your work day today at like 1 o'clock. Yes. Have your last meeting. My last meeting ends at, I think, 1 o'clock. So go <laughs> spend time with you. And then go spend time with everybody else, drinking whatever you want to drink for independence, whatever that means for you. And um, be safe this weekend. Hashtag variants are out there. Wear a mask if you think you need to. And that's it. <laughs> Thanks for meeting us at the Coffee and Grace table. Until next time, be bold, be authentic, and most importantly, be gracious. Thank you for joining the conversation. It was such a privilege to have you. We hope that you would keep joining the conversations. Meet us over at our social media where there's always a coffee and grace conversation happening.